Okay. The last subject for this week is coordinates. Coordinates is a bit of a conceptual confusing concept. And I don't think it is helped very much really by watching someone else talk about it. I think what helps is doing computations and examples and seeing how coordinates are useful. So I'm recording a lecture here, but I think it's the kind of lecture you're going to want to come back to. And I think textbook section 3.4 is the kind of section you're going to want to come back to as you come back to this idea throughout the term. So, as with all the other lectures this week, our setting is that we have some subspace of Rn, and we have a basis for that subspace. This means every vector w in our subspace can be written in precisely one way as a linear combination of the vectors in our basis. And the idea of coordinates is that since every vector can be written in exactly one way as a linear combination like this, we should just store the vector by storing this vector with just k elements in it rather than the n elements needed to write a vector in n-dimensional space. And so we'll say that c1, c2, blah, 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 ck is the coordinates of w in the basis, or with respect to the basis, v1 through vk. And so what you want to think here is that maybe n is like a thousand, because we have some database that has a thousand numbers stored for each person, and k is like two, because we've isolated that all the important stuff is happening in some two-dimensional subspace of variation. And we want to be allowed to work with vectors that have just two entries rather than vectors that have a thousand entries. So as our running example, we'll take a, a plane x plus two y plus four z equals zero in three-dimensional space. There's nothing special about this plane, it's just the first one I thought of. And we will take the basis for this plane consisting of the vectors 2, negative 1, 0, and 0, 2, negative 1. Nothing special about this basis. It's just the first basis I thought of. So if we take some other vector in this plane, for example, 6, negative 1, negative 1 is in this plane. If we take a vector 6, negative 1, negative 1, we can write it in a unique way as a linear combination of my two basis vectors. And concretely, we see that 6, negative 1, negative 1 is 3 times my first basis vector plus 1 times my second basis vector. And so when we write the vector 6, negative 1, negative 1 in the coordinates coming from this basis, we just write it as 3, 1. Um, oops. This 3 is this 3. This 1 is this 1. And so the idea is that we have taken this vector, which used to have three entries, and by writing it in and by using a basis for my subspace, I've expressed it with just two entries. Notice if I take two different vectors and play this game, then the coordinates of V plus W will be the coordinates of V plus the coordinates of W. So let's watch that happen. Here is the vector from the previous slide. Six negative one negative one is three times two negative one zero plus one times zero two minus one. And here is some other vector. Um, eight negative one negative three. I believe that's in the subspace. That's four times two, negative one, zero, plus uh, three times zero, two, minus one. Oops, I think I made an arithmetic error. Six minus four is two. This number should be two. Sorry about that. 
And so here are two vectors in the subspace. In coordinates, I would represent them as 3, 1, and 4, 3. If I add them together, then I get 14, 1, minus 4. If I add these two vectors together, you're working coordinates, I get 7, 4. And sure enough, 7, 14, negative 1, 4 does indeed equal 7, 2, negative 1, 0, plus uh, 4 times 0, 2, negative 1. So the, co the sum written in coordinates is the sum of the coordinates. And similarly, if I were to rescale by some scalar k, the coordinates of the rescaled vector would be the rescalings of the coordinates. So we can do all of our standard vector computations in the standard ways working in coordinates. Now, besides vectors, the other thing we have in this course are matrices. So suppose we have that A is some matrix, concrete we think of it as a linear map, it's an n by n matrix, so it takes Rn to itself, and suppose it takes the subspace V to itself. So I feed it input from V, and I get output that's back in V again. So then I can take my matrix, my linear map A, and give as input to it each of my basis vectors, and I can expand my output as a linear combination again of those basis vectors in some unique way, and this will give me a K by K matrix C. And this K by K matrix we say is the matrix of A in the basis V1 through VK. So let's see an example. Here is a linear map, X, Y, Z goes to eight X, goes to eight Z, X, Y. You can check that this map takes the plane X plus two Y plus four Z to itself. Let's see what this map does to each of our basis vectors. The basis vector two, negative one, zero, it turns into zero, two, negative one. This zero up at the top is eight times zero. And the other basis vector is zero, two, negative one, it turns into negative eight, zero, two. That negative eight is eight times negative one, which we can re-express in our basis as negative four times the first basis vector minus two times the second basis vector. So, our linear transformation written in this basis, the first column is going to be zero, one, because that corresponds to what's happening over here, that my first basis vector became the second basis vector. My second column is going to be negative four, negative two. That corresponds to the negative four and the negative two here. My second basis vector became negative four, my first basis vector, minus two times my second basis vector. Okay, that's the list, and the thing to notice is that, yeah, just like when we're writing vectors and coordinates, matrices and coordinates work the same way. If I want to, if I have two linear maps, A and B, that both take V to themselves, then I can either multiply the matrices and take coordinates, or I can take coordinates of each of them and multiply those two matrices. And similarly, if I want to combine a matrix and a vector or anything like that. Uh, I am going to stop here and hope you all have a good night. And, and I hope you have some wonderful linear algebra to enjoy. Good night.